as a Pokemon biologist, what are my top five animals that need Pokemon versions? To celebrate Pokemon Day and to explore the world of Pokemon together, I, Shelby, a wild animal biologist and Pokemon trainer who often combines her passions into one, is gonna introduce you to five incredible animals that need to have Pokemon versions. So you ready? Join the safari and let's get started. Starting us off strong at number five is the California condor. Yeah, I'm biased because I'm a Californian, but hear me out. These incredible birds that made it back from the brink of extinction would be a flying and electric type. With a wingspan of up to 10 feet, the California condor is the largest flying bird in North America. They glide on air currents and can get up to crazy heights of 15,000 feet. Now the electric typing might sound weird, but I think it would be great to pay homage to their nickname of Thunderbird, as it is believed they bring thunder to the skies with the beating of their tremendous wings. And besides, we need a vulture Pokemon that is not a dark type. Sorry, Volibee Amanda Buzz. The fourth animal that needs a Pokemon version is the Hammerhead Worm. They would definitely be a bug and poison type. These guys get up to 15 inches long and are like a real life Pokemon. On the underside of their hammer head, they have sensory organs that help the worm find prey, which they then pin down with their head and their body. Using their mouth, which conveniently is located halfway down their body, they open their mouth wide and weirdly enough, the back portion of their mouth extends forwards to form a sheet which then clamps around the earthworm. As if that wasn't weird enough, the poison typing is because the hammerhead worm will inject the earthworm with paralyzing saliva enzymes before consuming them whole. Moving on, meet the third animal that needs a Pokemon version, Tharcherfish. These guys would be a water and flying type. Yeah, I know it's a fish, flying type, hold your horses or hold your fins. While they may appear like an ordinary fish, think again. They shoot a powerful stream of water to knock insects into the water for them to then go gobble up. However, they don't give up easily. If their Pokemon move misses, they can shoot up to seven streams in one single mouthful of water. Yet if their streams still continue to miss, this fish has the ability to jump out of the water with enough momentum to chase down its meal. Talk about perseverance. Now the second animal that I think needs a real life Pokemon equivalent as a Pokemon biologist is a bit of a weird one, not gonna lie. Meet the Cantor's giant soft shell. Yes, this animal does exist. And I think it would be a water and ground typing. Cantor this giant softshell is one of the world's largest freshwater turtles. They can get over a meter long and weigh up to 100 kilograms. Whew. Now these guys are highly specialized ambush predators and kind of remind me of Stumpfisk, actually. The ground typing comes into play because, well, they spend most of their time under the ground with only their snout emerging. And they wait, and they wait, and they wait some more. Then they'll use the move quick attack to capture their prey. Now my top one choice, I'm really biased about, not gonna lie. My top animal that needs to have a Pokemon version is the cheetah. Now while a lot of cat Pokemon have the dark typing, the cheetah definitely would not. They are more crepuscular in nature, meaning they're more active at dawn and dusk when it's a bit cooler. Now the cheetah is the fastest land animal, so it definitely would know moves like extreme speed and quick attack. But the typing that I wanna propose would be grass. After the adorableness that is Sprigagito, Sprigagito, I definitely think the cat grass combination does work. Aside from stalking prey in the grass, yeah, easy win there, it comes down to the baby cheetah. They spend the first six to eight weeks of their life living in little hidden nests. And not just one either. Cheetah moms will move their cubs regularly around to different nests to avoid detection from predators. And if the cheetah cub had a Pokemon version, they would certainly need to have a gray silvery mantle, AKA be really fluffy, as baby cheetahs have this to help them camouflage by looking like the one, the only honey badger, an animal 
you definitely don't want to mess with. Now it would only be the baby cheetah Pokemon that would have this mantle. For baby cheetahs lose it at about three months of age, which sounds just about right for the next evolution. But what do you think? Would the cheetah have a grass typing? Let me know down in the comments below. Pokemon Company, if you're watching, call me. I got a couple ideas and I'd love to be an advisor. But to keep your Pokemon Day celebrations continuing, why not check out my playlist here on the rest of my Pokemon Animal Comparison videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in that playlist.